sometimes bread is better. Yeah, so Jock goes through with a glow rod and is sort of scanning the small fridges up front. Uh, you can see a number of like fizzy drinks uh, still in there, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. uh, sort of pans back through. There's a full spice rack. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. All of Not this. only that, as you're looking, you see that there are still pans on the stove with food in them. There are still plates on the tables with half-eaten food. Uh, okay. You know, I'm not always the quickest on the draw, Tyver, but let me ask you something. Does it just look like this place was abandoned, like, all at once, buddy? It, uh, yeah, it does. I assume it's because the Battle of Coruscant happened, but... Oh, that's true, yeah. Well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how long the ship's been drifting here, so... Yeah. Uh, I don't know. This is giving me, like, just uh, the heebie-jeebies. It's uh, making me all... Oh, wiggly smiggly, I don't know. So, uh, There's a big crash. I'd like a fear check. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it's supposed to be only discipline. But I, uh, discipline or cool. Oh, I'll maybe. Yeah, I'll try. Uh, cool sounds good to me. Yeah, cool seems more <laughs> how Jock would deal with, with fear. Right. What's the uh, difficulty on that one? It's just a loud noise. It's going to be average. Two purples. One success. Right. There's a loud crash in the distance, and another one, and another one. They sound like they're getting closer, and as you look out of the kitchen, you can see that the lights are going on one by one. Oh. Right down the center. Wow. Oh, Tyver, what's what's happening? Are, like, the lights are going on and, and, and also exploding at the same time? I don't, uh, you know... Oh, what what exactly what kind of a crash is it is it it's it's just like a loud y you know in in the movies when they turn on big overhead lights and they make a like a, a crash noise oh okay okay yeah yeah I Gus must have found the uh, way to turn the power on oh excellent uh, uh, Jacques just sets down his glow rod and yeah oh that's that was a little spooky there <laughs> I thought whew. Yeah. A little unexpected. A little yeah. unexpected. You, as the lights come on, you get the full scope of this place. It is very large, and it looks like the Golden Gundark crew has already sort of cordoned off a, a number of restaurants on the other side. Uh, you, you see all of these tables still have food and trays, and there's some trays scattered across the floor. The food, now that you can see it properly, it's old and moldy. Not that moldy. It's really cold in here. Hmm. 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 Mysteriouser and mysteriouser. Oh, I feel like if this place was just abandoned in the middle of the battle, why wouldn't they just fly, like, try to fly out of the the action? I mean, I know, obviously, Tiber, there were hundreds of ships engaged, but it just seems like they just, like, jumped on the escape pods and just all just took off and you know it, it's like i don't know it's just giving me the weird weird vibes man weird vibes oh yeah. yeah i don't i don't know did you bring a data pad yeah oh yeah uh, my my menu pad you know can i, I send you the inventory oh you sure did <laughs> yeah okay uh if you want to take this one i'll go to the one next door and uh, we can see what's what. See what's worth getting out of here. Yeah, that sounds great. I'll. Uh, I'm just gonna go through and uh, start gathering this stuff. Yeah, you've got pretty much everything listed out here, so we're in good shape. <laughs> As you uh, make your way back into the restaurant, the Nikto of the uh, Golden Gundar crew starts walking over towards the towards the two of you. Hmm. So, which one of you won the auction? They look very uh, very professional. Other than the Golden Gundark uh, T-shirt, <laughs> but they they, they they look like they uh, maybe they've got like little glasses, okay. <laughs> uh, very fancy looking data pad, the Star Wars equivalent of khakis. I think the shirt's tucked in. <laughs> Isn't it just still khakis? <laughs> it probably still is just khakis. <laughs> uh, well, uh, you know, uh, Tyver, I think is uh, the main. Hey. Yeah, what's up? This place is in quite a state. Yeah, it looks like they left in a hurry. 
Yeah, did you guys... Uh, anything strange or odd? Looks like all this food has just been left here. We've got stuff on the stove, we've got pots, we've got pans. Looks like they were like right in the middle of cooking and then just all took off, escape, uh, took off in their escape pods. It just, just seems strange. Uh, yes, our refrigeration units are fully stocked. We've got spoiled bantha milk. We've got lots of stuff to deal with. Even when we're done, the scrappers are not going to be too happy with taking care of this thing. Right. Yes. Now, what sort of outfit are the are the two of you? I assume you mm-hmm. have a have a small restaurant. Yeah, you know, like uh, I work at I work at Ang's and. Uh, well, yeah, we're starting something in the lower levels. Oh. I may be able to offer you some help. This looks like a larger job than the two of you could do alone. The Golden Gundark has the means to assist some small businesses like your own we can help you get these larger units out of this place and down to your looks you up and down restaurant uh uh yeah that would actually be fantastic i mean this is this is no 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 hold up what what sort of deal are we talking about here oh nothing untoward we would simply deliver all of these items to you and well Pan is a generous hut. He likes to have shares in small businesses. If you've said you haven't started it yet, he would be maybe a silent uh, partner, something like that. Oh, uh, you... Kataira looks at Jock. Uh, let us, uh, we're going to just talk this over for a moment. So you're, if what I'm hearing you say is what you're saying, huh, you're essentially going to, uh help us move some of the stuff out of here and uh, help us, you know, get it back down to the surface and uh, in exchange, you know, uh, potentially, or uh, eventually we'll get a potentially a loan from your hut to start our our next venture. Is that is that what I'm reading? Is, potentially. Uh, After the auction yesterday, we did a little research into Tyver, Mr. Dane, and frankly, we were impressed with your track record your your previous employment and the way that you rose up to the to the level that you currently are and we think that your talent is wasted at hang's noodle house and would like to work together but pana likes it to keep things quiet so tyver says mr and sort of gestures towards the the nickdo chamras mr chamra you can just call me mr chamras he extends a hand and Tyver reluctantly shakes it. We're we're gonna talk about this. Well, I'll get back to you, Mister Chamras. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll definitely get back to you. P- please, for sure, absolutely. And as as he walks away, you see off in the distance Gus walking in like like a triumphant soldier. <laughs> I got the lights on. There's a uh, there's a a small round of applause uh, from T- Tyver and. And Jock, uh, not to speak for Tyver, but I think they're both just like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think the, yeah, the applause echoes in this large, quiet space. And the three of you get to work, uh, checking the inventory, seeing what is here and adding to it because there's a lot of things here that aren't accounted for, in particular, like the food items that are still in the refrigeration units and in the freezer. As you work, it's it's very quiet. You can hear Tyver in the next uh, next space over. Every once in a while, something shifts and moves. You can hear the big aqualish across this space grunting every once in a while. But other than that, it's it's silent. What is Jock thinking about while while working? How does how does Jock go about uh, working and inventorying and what's going through his head right now? I think the first thing Jock goes for is having heard uh, the the Nikto explain that there was a lot of spoiled stuff, and Jock really hasn't even gotten into the refrigeration area of this this restaurant. Jock wants to isolate as much of the spoiled food into like a back corner and close it up in a refrigeration unit, whatever the cheapest one is that's there that can hold mm-hmm. the most just going to stack everything in there and sort of tape it closed just so that when working through the rest of everything you don't have to deal with the smells and the you know it can be a lot 
um, particularly with Bantha milk. Jock knows all too well uh, how quickly it's that thick. can spoil. Very thick and blue. <laughs> thick and blue and curdles literally overnight. It's just a mess. So, yeah, Jock isolates all of the spoiled items quickly and then goes through all the dry goods. So there's, you know, there's uncooked noodles that are, you know, potentially packaged well enough to where it's keepable. Of course, spices are going to last a long time. And so Jock just starts isolating all of the food and getting it out and then looking at some of the smaller things that the uh, hover barrow can hold. So like, you know, small toasters, uh, anything that's of high quality, and of course utensils, you know, all these things that add up over time and can cost you a fortune, really. You know, just start stacking all the lightweight stuff on the hover barrel. And yeah. it's, it's, I would imagine at this point, it's even more rickety than before and sort of moves with a, with a, an angry clatter, uh, if, <laughs> if, if you have yeah. to, if you have to, so. You're, you're working, you're filling up the hover barrel. Um, I will flip my one and only dark side point. <laughs> Half of the lights go out. The, you can, you can hear it. You can hear the, uh, the hum of them as they, as they go out and you hear Gus from from next door go ah oh, man <laughs> and then it's silent for a beat and then off in the distance you hear a scream uh, Jacques reaches for the glow rod sort of you know it's still I'm guessing incredibly dim but finds a glow rod yeah, not, not dark but dim flashes it on the face of Gus and Tyver they both look surprised. Gus's big Rodian eyes with the, the starry galaxies in them are, are wide open, and Tyver's looking over his shoulder, looking around to see what's going on. Jacques puts the flashlight right up to his face, where it's illuminated from below. It's like, uh, what? What was that? We got, we, should we go see if we can help, or... I mean, From across the way, you hear Mr. Chamros say to one of the Aqualish, Go check it out. Oh, well, I guess... Uh, yeah, J- Jock's kind of left with a decision, like, maybe we just let the Aqualish handle it. It seems to be... <laughs> or Well, if we, we've got this first aid kit, we should probably help if we can. Oh, yes. Oh, that's a great point. <laughs> I guess um, a Tiver's seeing the indecision and sort of, like, I don't want to get involved in this look on... Uh, Jacques' face. It's like, you know what? Let's let's all go. We just everything's stacked up here. It's not going anywhere. Let's, you know, maybe maybe uh, they need more than one person. Let's just, you know, it could be something fell. You know, I don't know. Well, yeah, this whole derelict ship. I mean, it's just who knows. Let's go. Uh, so yeah, I guess they're gonna follow the Aqualish in that direction. The three of you follow the Aqualish. I think like almost every other light overhead light is is out and it's uh you, you follow the aqualish as they appear and and disappear into the darkness and appear in the light again and they move slowly they appear ready to fight if they must because they are one of pana's goons you hear a commotion before you see anything you hear people yelling, and as you turn a corner, you see uh, two people fighting. There, people are are standing around them, and and uh, a few people are trying to intervene as as a Mon Calamari sort of scrambles and scratches at one of the people that you knew, you know, you saw come aboard. the The Mon Calamari looks thin and frail, but they're moving fast. They're 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 strong. <laughs> oh, oh, Tiver, 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 buddy, 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 buddy. buddy. Uh, 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 what's happening? What's going on? Uh, uh, I have I have no idea. Uh, so we can see this Mon Calamari sort of going at someone and then sort of running off in another direction. No, going going at going towards them, like uh, on top of them. They they've got something in their hand and they're trying to. Uh, you can't tell what they're trying to do, but they're they're attacking somebody. They're like brawling with somebody who's just trying to get them off. And I think the Aqualish moves quickly with very efficient movements and just grabs the 
Mon Calamari back by the back of the neck and lifts them up off this person. You can see he's now breathing heavily. There's like something on their on their cheeks near their mouth. Oh, the jock sort of is uh, using the glow rod to try and provide as much light to everybody in that situation. Is there and I think maybe tentatively moving forward to see if they can assist. Uh, potentially this Mon Calamari got left behind, is sick, has some kind of fever or something, and it's causing them to act out. I don't know. Jock's thinking, let's try to get keep everybody safe. Yeah. I think somebody else says, put him in here. And they, they open up the, a door to uh, a shop. It's all glass, glass windows, a glass front. And the Aqualish, like... Chucks them. Effortlessly <laughs> yeah. tosses the Mon Calamari in there and they knock against some um, like racks of of clothing. Apparently this is a mall. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they close the door and uh, the the person gets up quickly and, and runs towards the glass and just presses up against the glass. You see streaks where their hands are. Oof. Uh... Other people are attending the person who was attacked, lifting them from the ground, seeing if they're okay. Yeah, I think... I think Tyver is one of them. Uh, like, looking at the door to the shop and the windows, mm -hmm. is there a way to sort of assess, like, you know, how secure this space is as far as... You mean uh, perception, mechanics? Yeah, I was thinking something like that, potentially doing a mechanics and trying to figure out like, you know, if I go in there and disable the doors or maybe there's a shutters that go over the glass or something just to... Mm. Yeah, let's get an average mechanics check. Okay. Maybe I'm overthinking it. But Jock, you know, Jock really wants to keep everybody safe. You've got all those light side points too. Just that is so true. You know. mm, yeah. I'm gonna you use... could just flip one and, and have something there. Oh, that's true as well. Yeah, you know, you know, it's almost like I don't know how to play this game. Uh, <laughs> I just, I really don't. Uh, yeah, I'll flip one and uh, Jacques recognizes the panel. Jacques's done a little bit of kitchen work uh, and recognizes the panel. It's pretty familiar. You can simply peel it back and there's basically a handle behind it and sort of chunk chunk like a, like one of those large uh, switches you see on generators and yeah. just pulls it down and it there's like a almost like a yeah yeah, yeah exactly the 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 sh sort of the blast shields or whatever would go down in front of the glass and the door you can hear a second set of locks go off just to further secure it since it's star wars you you actually i think you you do that with the handle because mm -hmm. everything's analog so there has to be a, a switch right. but then instead of like metal going down it's like a uh, a red glow there of a go. force field that yeah. appears in front of it. Smart, smart. Yeah, <laughs> this uh, this mall of the galaxy is, um, <laughs> you know, has has one one ruffian contained. One ruffian contained. <laughs> yep. What do you want to do? Tiver's uh, helping this person up. The Aqualish is is uh, I think it looks like they're like really interrogating somebody to see what's going on like coercion style you don't see gus oh hey tyver where did where did gus go wasn't gus with us i he probably just stayed back with the kitchen oh, oh all right uh strange i thought we were all together but uh i guess i was following that aqualish i was laser laser focus you know hmm. look you know, I don't know much about these things. You know, my passion is also my pursuit is also my knowledge. You know, I'm all about the flavor. But I think uh, we've got to see what happened here. Like, this isn't, you know, uh, this well, something's gone Felco wrong. Felco here, uh, the, the Verpine was attacked. He says that this guy just popped out of nowhere and tried to start, try, start started to try to feed him something tried to feed him something it, yeah weird right like, yeah he just attacked him with food huh i mean i've heard of like you know an aggressive menu style but that's not huh that's not that's not in our playbook it's not in our recipe book you don't force feed people things unless they really need it you know like kids they don't take their medicine but the you know 
the uh, what what was it that they uh, tried to put in their mouth? Uh, Jock starts looking around at the ground and yeah, you you spot some some crumbs. There's not much not much there. It's you also spot it smeared on the inside of this glass now with a force field. And Felco, hearing you, says, it, "Whatever it was, it was sweet." Like like custard or like a pie filling or. Uh, yeah, it had the texture of a custard. Hmm. Jacques knows a thing or two about, you know, I, like I said, Jacques has quite the sniffer, uh, which is, you know, that whole olfactory sense all connected together. Can I, can I look at some of the crumbs, sort of give them a whiff and see if I can place it? Is that a weird thing to do? I'm not trying to like, uh, I'm, no, trying to, I'm trying to Scooby-Doo this mystery, uh, you know. No, it's great. Um... <laughs> You are not the first smell-based oh, really? <laughs> character I've played with, so <laughs> though you are the least weird. Um, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's see. Yeah, let's let's get a let's get a smell check. Okay. Uh, it's gonna be perception. Yeah. And it's going to be daunting. That's four, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, I will flip a light side point, and I'll make okay. one of one of my two greens into a yellow. Uh, uh, you only have two greens on it? Mm-hmm. But I'm fine with the daunting, because I want to make this happen. Okay. Uh, Let's do it. Can I also argue for a blue due to my uh, extensive knowledge and the sniffer? You can. I'm going to argue for a black for the quantity of what you are sniffing. There's not much there. That's true. That's true. Okay. Got any, you have any more boost dice? I don't think there's anything else that I could add in. Okay. Unless it's very clearly food-based, in which case I would have even more expertise. But like I said, Jock uh, wanders the streets looking... It appears to yeah. be food. Oh, okay. Well, I'll take a boost die then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. So I got a yellow, a green, two blues, four purples, the daunting check, and the, um, yeah, the setback. <gasps> one, wow. One success and four threats. Four threats, though. I only rolled one one success or failure. That's incredible. The rest, yeah, okay. No failures. No, none. That's wild. Okay. Okay. You can't quite you can't place exactly what it is. From from what it looks like, it looks like some sort of uh, soft dessert. Hmm. It looks like you, you can smell sugar. You can smell a little a little burnt like almost caramely. Mm -hmm. smell to it there's a spice with the four threats that you cannot recognize at all um it seems very very strange and exotic um but it's almost like a flan hmm uh, this is uh this is actually like food it's it's got uh sort of like a wave of it's 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 almost like a like a thon a flan sorry a flan, and it's got, uh... I can't place this other spice, uh... Tyver, have you... Don't eat it, Tyver says, not looking at you as you, you look up at him. He's looking at this person, trapped, who's just staring hungrily at the space that you are, you're, you're sniffing and, and investigating. So, uh, Jacques sort of continues to waft the uh, the smell of these these crumbs towards his nose but starts to move position in front of the glass or you know what is now like sort of has a force field there and uh, do they follow jock as as I jock is walking as you move they do not follow you and you notice that they they were not looking at you they were looking through you at the verpine who has this stuff on the sides of his mandibles. Uh, hey there, friend. Uh, Jacques here, and this is, uh, Tyver, and I don't know this, this, this guy, but, uh, you know, uh, how you feeling? You okay? I mean, a little I'm a little shaken up, but I think I'm okay. I, I gotta get back to it. I'm getting, uh, or the salvage supply repo company, we're, we're getting paid by the, by the hour. I gotta get back to work. Oh, uh, all right. I mean, uh, you do... I don't, what do we? I don't know what to do with you guys. Decide what to do with that that guy. Maybe call the clones or something. 
Yeah, that's a possibility. Um, uh, uh, what was the flavor like? Do you have any? I I told you it was sweet. Uh, just sweet. I mean, like sweet, like a pear. Sweet, like a sweet, like uh, like sweet, uh, like nectar, like like honey. I don't know. I don't have a refined palate. It was sweet. All right. Oh, all right. I'm just trying to get to the bottom of this this food zombie over here. It's like he's done. Oh, uh, I don't know. It's a, like night of the living bread in here. <laughs> you know, it's just, oh, it's just uh, I don't know. I'm just, this is a spooky situation. I was spooked when I walked in here and the lights weren't all the way on. So oh, I'm really spooked now. I'm like, a, oh, yeah. All right. We'll just, you know, calm us if you, if you start feeling weird, you know? Um, okay, fine. I don't even know you, but okay. I guess I guess we're in charge of this investigation, <laughs> so we're gonna get to the bottom of this. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, food-based mysteries, so right up my alley. The Aqualish just shakes her head and moves on, moves back towards uh, towards the the cafeteria, and uh, as she does, the lights begin to come back on, and you hear you hear a voice through the ship's comms. Gus drags to the rescue. <laughs> You're welcome for the light. Uh, uh, Jock just decides to yell at the closest o- open calm. <laughs> Thanks, bro. <bruh! laughs> <laughs> uh, he probably didn't hear me, did he? Yeah. Anywho, probably not. No. So, uh, you got any uh, got any ideas, Tyver? I mean, I have no idea. This whole thing is weird. I think we should just get our stuff and get out of here. Okay. My only other thought was like maybe if something happened like there was like an illness or something we could go to say like the uh, infirmary and uh, look and see if there's any kind of logs or I don't know. Well if you want to we could. Well we could just stop by there real quick. I don't really have any other leads you know. I mean uh, Alright where do you think it is? Well if I'm judging by the shape of these halls I'd say anywhere really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, does that help did that help narrow things down for you no uh, no it didn't all right let's let's try this way so let's uh <laughs> let's get a streetwise check to see how long it takes okay uh oh, i would like it to be it's just gonna be an average okay. check unless you want to argue for a different uh skill i think streetwise is pretty good i've got uh, i've got a rank in it so all right i got a yellow a green and two purples on this one Okay. Ah, so uh, one that's... failure, three advantages. All right. So it again the failure, like like in the beginning, the failure is that it takes longer than it really should take, and by the time you get there, you're 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 sweating a little bit. Uh, it's it's it was kind of a long walk, even though it's it's cold, it, and it sort of makes you feel even even more cold the way it kind of does when you sweat and it's really chilly out. Yeah. Do you have ideas for your three advantages? Maybe there's something along the way, mayhaps a clue, that would <laughs> potentially uh, help me in uh, unraveling this mystery. Jock is is, you know, wants to get to the wants to get to the bottom of this because what if there's you know what if this is something that could be spread to other other folks you know, uh, so. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So with three advantages. I think when you get to the infirmary, the door is closed, and you open it, and when you get in there, it is it is warm. It's warmer than the rest of the ship. It's like the, the power was maybe on here longer. Hmm. You get in there, and you see supplies scattered across surfaces, like petri dishes with samples of, of things in, in them. You see the one bed the one like cot in there has uh, a pair of binders attached to it one side's open the other side's attached to the to the cot hmm. okay tyver uh what do you make of all this that's it looks like they've they've isolated a substance and as at home as jock would be in a kitchen he is the precise opposite of that in an infirmary so he's <laughs> sort of He's got the glow rod even still just sort of shining it, but holding the glow rod at arm's length and sort of looking yeah. at it from a distance. 
like everything on the the shelves and the table sort of standing at the door you know the the other elbow pulled in and and holding on to the top of his apron and the glow rod extended all the way at arm's length like okay yeah. those are well and this room is is lit too so you're just shining light into the darker corners right okay well yeah because it's yeah. powers on <laughs> here and it's it's warmer hmm. you see on the surfaces those those petri dishes you see uh, syringes and, and tourniquets and and uh yeah it's it's a weird setup it doesn't nest i mean it is obviously a, a med bay but it's not like whoever left this place left in the middle of or or had just finished what they were doing hmm. i don't i don't know what to make of this honestly this is all very strange and well here's the other thing now notice those binders over there like yeah. strapped to that bed so they no i saw that so here here's okay i'm starting to pick i'm starting to piece this together a little bit so all right something got loose on this ship and some kind of virus or a creature that you know with um you don't think it's that blue shadow thing again what blue shadow thing let's just hope it's not the blue shadow virus oh the blue shadow oh uh t tell me tell me more uh or don't i don't know no, you don't want to know. Okay. Uh, if, if you don't know, you don't want to know. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm piecing it together. They're studying this thing. Something got loose. Some, and people are acting wild and strange, and they had to strap one to that bed. That's starting to make sense. Does that make sense to you, Tyver? That makes sense to me. I think that seems accurate, okay. probably. Okay. Uh, I, I'd like to look around for any kind of data pad where I could read up on oh man everything. yeah okay all right so let's get a let's get a what was the last one you did was streetwise to find the place mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff in here let's just make it an easy perception check to find what you're looking for okay all right ah one success one threat one success one threat first I'm gonna flip a dark side point for something that is happening elsewhere right now oh no oh and looking around this space, you you see a few computer terminals. Don't I don't think you do find a data pad, but you find a, a computer terminal with a little hollow projector on top of it. And as you turn it on, you get a message. Whoever finds this, we've encountered something strange. On our latest cruise through wild space, we stopped at a few uncharted planets. The crew of the Galleria collected samples on a number of planets for scientific purposes, but it appears that one got out and was mixed in with our food supply. Whatever is happening to the Mon Calamari aboard this ship, well, may the force be with us. If you're getting this message, run. There's only one way to beat this thing, and that is... Flip a dark side point. <laughs> The, uh, the message scrambles the, the small shoulders up hologram of the Mon Calamari who was on the uh, on top of the, the computer fuzzes out and disappears. Tyver looks frightened. Mm. Mm. Uh, so uh, I don't know about you, Tyver, but I found that unsettling. Uh, no, I did not like that at all. No, yeah. Uh, we're, all, we're in agreement there, my friend. We are in agreement. You know, what if we just tried to like maybe like just try to like get off the ship you know like just for now and uh come back with, i like, think that's a good idea yeah come back with like what a, about the, all the other people and gus that's good you know what evacuation should be priority numero uno and i think we're gonna go ahead and uh we're gonna go ahead and do that so which way did the verpine go also, uh, does did, did did they say it was only affecting the Mon Calamari on board? Uh, it, he didn't say. I don't know. Oh, well. I don't know where the Verpine went. We got all sorts of turned around back there. All right. Gus first. Then we'll try to get word out to the rest. Uh, first thought. Comms. Any kind of comms. There's like got to be like a shipwide comm. They just used it, right? Like. Uh, yeah, Gus just used it. Uh, where do you think's the nearest comm station do you have anything on you you have like a bullhorn or anything uh, i don't carry around things that i don't need on a daily basis unlike you jock look look 
we've got serious business. We got we gotta take care of some stuff right now. And I don't need you picking on me. Look, Jacques actually like reaches back and grabs the handle of the the skillet, and it dawns on him that he has a giant shield practically. So pulls the pulls the pan out. It's like, uh, you want uh, you want the spatula? And so pulls I'll, the spatula. I'll out. take the spatula. Sure. Yeah. I don't know what, how much good it's gonna do. Look, man, if just grip it and flip it. That's what I always say. Okay, just whatever you grip gotta, and flip it. Yeah, oh, gri- grip it, grill it, flip it, chill it. Okay, so just uh, so they sort of make their way down the hall. I, I guess I, I'm once again looking for some kind of way to get like a comm across the ship, uh, a panel, a, a room that looks like it could have some kind of communication out. But a security office would be great. You could roll, or you have three light side points. Oh, I sure do, don't I? Yeah, I'll uh, I'll flip one to see like an emergency call box, something similar okay. to that uh, idea uh, on the one of the walls coming up. Yeah, yeah, maybe near one of the junctions or the spots where we uh, grabbed a glow rod and whatnot. It's sort of right next to that big, big red phone idea. Uh, so yeah, Jock's gonna pick it up and and dial in and sort of. Or actually, just hold down the button for calm everything everywhere. Uh, so, I don't mean to alarm anybody. Yes, I do, actually. I do mean to alarm everyone. Alarms should be going off on the ship right now because things are, I mean, uh, there's a, uh, I think we have a food-related virus or something that's affecting, we, I, I'm not explaining this very well. Hold on, I, I'll come in again. I'll come in again. It goes dead. It's like <laughs> some sort yeah. of foodborne illness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't think this is a hand washing issue. Uh, Tyver, we've got to come up with a better announcement. How about we just say everyone needs to uh, uh, evacuate immediately. Let's meet up in the food court, do a head count and get out of here. That sounds sure. Better. Let's, Let's do, do it. Let's do that. Gets back on the comm. Okay. I've, I've collected myself. I've collected myself. I've collected Every, we need to evacuate, okay? There needs to be a shipwide evacuation. Leave what you're doing. We've got a big, tr- a big time trouble, okay? Everybody, let's meet in the food court. Let's count heads. You know, make sure we're all uh, okay, okie dokie, and then let's get out of here. All right. I flip a dark side point. Oh no! <laughs> As you get to okie dokie, you see around the corner in those uh, uh, what are now these the bright lights of this place mm-hmm. to people just quickly move around the corner uh, both of them thin and both of them fast oh. it's the verpine oh, and no. the mon calamari oh no and as they turn around the corner they see you thanks for listening to this episode of chorus hot nights thank you to sam from the starboards podcast for playing on these episodes if you like chorus hot nights be sure to check out our other shows the other place tales from the gray library and lone gamers of the apocalypse and be sure to check out our Patreon. Currently on the Patreon, Doug and I are releasing Bad Batch Boys, a podcast where I make Doug watch all of the Star Wars things that he hasn't seen. We're currently doing a deep dive into The Clone Wars Season 7 with episodes releasing every other week. Coruscant Nights is a production of Nightcast Creative. You can find more info about us and all of our other shows at nightcastcreative.com.